Okay, uh, welcome. So now we're getting into some verifying identity. So what I have is cosine squared of beta minus sine squared of beta equals two cosine squared of beta minus one. And I kind of have a list of you know how I'd like to kind of work through these problems. And I kind of made a you know video on it, so I'm not really going to follow it. But I think this is something you can always kind of revert back to when simplifying this. So you know, think sides. We need to kind of pick a side, and usually we want to pick the most complicated side. Now, in in choosing the most complicated side. Um, you know, usually sometimes it has maybe the most terms or maybe the most operations, um, but it's really kind of arbitrary on what you're going to determine is going to be most complicated side. I'm going to choose to work with the left side is going to be my most complicated side. And so by choosing with the left side, the next thing is I look at is my trigonometric identity. So how can I apply trigonometric identities to the left side? Well, the main important trigonometric identity is I notice when I have cosine squared and a sine squared, I know that those are trigonometric identities together. And that's a part of the looking ahead. See what identity you'd want to use. And the main identity that I'm going to want to use, I'll actually write it in blue, is going to be sine squared of beta plus cosine squared of beta equals 1. So by applying that, what I can do is I can either sol solve for either sine or cosine. And I need to determine what do I need to solve for. So that's part of the looking ahead. I want to get everything on the left side in terms of cosine. So therefore, I'm going to want to rewrite my sine in terms of cosine. So by doing that, I'm going to solve for sine squared of beta on both sides. All right? And that's the reason why you know, it's important for you to look ahead and see what is it you want to solve for. If you want to get the left side to look like the right side, you don't want to convert cosine to sine. You want to convert sine to cosine. So therefore, I'm now going to have cosine squared of beta equals 1 minus sine squared of beta. So now, what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm sorry, I don't want to, I've got to solve for sine. So I subtract cosine squared of beta on both sides. I was saying the same thing, but I'm not doing what I wanted to do. So therefore, I can now say sine squared of beta equals 1 minus cosine squared of beta. OK, so now I know what sine is going to equal to. I'm going to replace that with 1 minus cosine of beta. So I'll have cosine squared of beta minus, now I'm rather subtracting, now I'm rather subtracting from sine squared of beta, I'm going to rewrite what sine squared of beta e is equal to by using my Pythagorean identity, which is 1 minus cosine squared of beta. Now, I'm just not going to, I'm, we, you could just keep on writing the other side. But remember, we're just trying to simplify and work on one side. So I'm just going to work on simplifying this expression. And then I'll rewrite that at the end just to verify it. All right, so now I'm going to apply the Stuart property. So I get cosine squared of beta minus 1 plus cosine squared of beta. Combine my like terms, I get 2 cosine squared of beta minus 1. And does that equal what's on my right side? Of course it does. 2 cosine squared of beta minus 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You can see I have now verified the identity. I picked one side. I looked ahead. I used my Pythagorean identities. I simplified it. And now I can verify. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.